Good morning, dear listeners. Welcome to Klaipadas Nafta Investor Relations Conference. I'm Paulus from NASDAQ Vilnius, and I'll be moderating today's event. We will start with a presentation from the management, which will be followed by the Q&A session. Please be informed that this webinar is being recorded and will be available for a rewatch on NASDAQ Baltic YouTube channel. As always, I encourage every one of you to share your questions in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. And you can submit them either anonymously or with your name. With that said, I'm pleased to introduce today's presenters, the Chief Executive Officer of Klipados Nafta, Dari Shelenskis, and Active Chief Financial Officer, Vaidatas Dermekis. Darius, please, the floor is yours. Thank you and uh, good morning for all participants who joined us today. Uh, as usually, uh, we would like to start our presentation from reminding our vision and our mission uh, by expecting that uh, there are at least one new participant within today's audience who is not yet aware of the purpose and then strategy of KN or KN Energy soon. Uh, so one more time to remind that our vision is to be at the forefront of energy transformation in a region and globally to support it for our customers and to become climate neutral ourselves latest by 2050. While our mission stands for offering services to our customers for a wide range of uh, various products, liquid energy products, petrochemicals, feedstocks, um, and uh, of course, enabling, enabling decarbonization in the region and being ready to provide services for our customers in a future energy mix by handling, storing uh, future energy sources and future energy fuels. And continuing to assure energy security in Lithuania, uh, in Lithuania, for Lithuanian state, for Lithuanian businesses, and of course for, for Lithuanian and maybe even regions uh, people. Uh, and finally, we are continuing our, uh, let's say, uh, global footprint or global presence direction and developing LNG terminals and other sustainable energy infrastructure projects. Um, so going further, uh, as, as, as usually, I would like to highlight the main events which uh, took time during Q3. And uh, during Q3, we have finalized the selection of uh, operations and maintenance service provided for our FSRU independence following the takeover. Uh, and I'm pleased to announce that uh, after rigorous international tender, we have decided to continue our partnership with Hoag LNG. Uh, we possess extensive expertise in operating this type of floating terminals as being actually the biggest uh, uh, FSRU owner in the world meaning having also the biggest experience in this field. Also, we now regulated activities uh, operating uh, FSRU in Lithuania. It's uh, another good new news came out uh, where regulator approved the higher VAC start starting 2024. And this will allow us to ensure needed investments into this crucial for entire region energy infrastructure. And also to think about sustainability related investments uh, which we will definitely need uh, once we will become full owner of, uh, of this asset. And uh, by understanding that uh, during regasification uh, process, uh, there are quite a lot of emissions. Uh, Klaipeda uh, was also visible in LNG world uh, with uh, another great event where KN was hosting global LNG terminal managers in, uh, in annual conference here in Klaipeda. And last but not the least, uh, we are finally changing our legal name to KN Energies, uh, which is a natural continuity of our strategic changes together with a new strategy. It is not a rebranding, but I think it's very important for us because uh, we are uh, quite a long time already not only Klaipeda and definitely not only oil or nafta. So let's move uh, to a short business overview before we will get to the numbers. And uh, uh, we will start, I will start from uh, going through the key highlights from the 
liquid energy terminals. Uh, so continuing diversification and variety of provided services and handled liquid fuels, petrochemicals and biofuels was, uh, was again a key driver during Q3. Uh, and also, let's say our newest development activities in Mariampola started to contribute to this business uh, segment's performance let's say, more tangible. Uh, also, uh, recovery in, in, in a mainly pet petroleum fuels consumption was also one of the factors positively, positively affecting the result during Q3. Uh, bitumen infrastructure, which uh, I, I can say it's still quite new, uh, but it performs really well. And um, after the war has started and um, Russian bitumen uh, was uh, restricted or even banned in some regions. Uh, growth uh, of the services in, in this area was quite a significant uh, where our transshipment uh, uh, in bitumen infrastructure was 42% uh, more compared with the same period 2022. Uh, Let's move on with uh, our, our business stream and uh, talking about regulated uh, activities. Uh, amount of gas actually provided to the grid from, from our FSRU independence was quite similar to previous year's figures. Uh, but in comparison with, uh, with the trends in Europe, with other terminals in Europe, uh, we were one of the leaders of uh, available capacities utilization and uh, actually, uh, you know, we, we, we uh, are matching uh, all possible demand in our market. So um, also, I mean, about 80% of entire gas uh, flow, uh, which uh, was in Lithuania, came through our infrastructure. Talking about the prices of the gas, so gas prices st stabilized to close 40s level. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the reason of uh, record high storage levels in, in gas storages, storages across the Europe, uh, meaning that uh, even though the winter is, uh, is coming, uh, uh, shortages are not, are not uh, expected. Um, so talking about our commercial LNG, uh, let's move forward. So talking about our commercial LNG activities, uh, the main message here is that we are continuing, continuing to grow uh, and increase our, our revenues from this uh, business stream. And uh, revenues were growing from our commercial LNG activities, which includes both global LNG projects and uh, also small scale uh, terminal activity in Klaipeda. So revenues was growing by 35%, which uh, again confirms that um, our strategic direction uh, to monetize our know-how uh, pays back. Okay, so uh, talking about the uh, following slide, uh, since uh, we are obliged uh, to provide ESG related data and uh, we are one of the forefronters with uh, CSR reports already for second or third year in a row, uh, we decided to include uh, some information to the investors into our quarterly uh, presentations. Uh, so it's not a question about importance of such, uh, let's say, activity since uh, we are uh, still operating uh, or a lot of businesses is in, uh, are, in, are related with fossil. Uh, and uh, that means that uh, uh, important part of our activity is continuing efforts to further minimize our climate footprint. Uh, despite of huge actually progress during uh, recent years uh, on energy efficiency, uh, and uh, reductions of emissions uh, from our activities, we are managing further to decrease our CO2 footprint uh, in comparison to the same period last year. And uh, we have managed uh, to minimize emissions within nine months of uh, 2023 by additional 9%. And uh, I would like to remind that uh, our strategy is to become climate neutral by 2050. Until 2030, uh, the interim goal is to reach 30% ambition 
on the emissions reduction, which, as I said previously, taking into consideration that we are becoming owner uh, of uh, FSRU is quite a challenging goal to achieve. Uh, talking about the other part uh, of ESG, uh, about the social part, so emphasis on social component uh, of ESG is also one of our key areas of attention and uh, efforts in safety, culture improvement and investments into this area allows us to continue safe and reliable operations in all our terminals. Uh, we use TRCF as a metric to measure our performance and, uh, uh, and uh, I believe that uh, uh, with reserved opt opt optimism, of course, uh, we are in a good position uh, to reach uh, ambition for this year, which is uh, below 0 0.81. About methodology, there is a description how it is used, uh, how it is used, how it is calculated, but in general, it's number of uh, recordable incidents for uh, per 100 uh, full-time uh, workers during uh, one year period. It's an um, industry best practice, uh, and we decided also to use the same KPI which represents the, the status uh, of progress of a company in, in a field of uh, social and safety part. Uh, talking about statistics, so entire key and group uh, managed to work without uh, any lost time incident for 250 days already. And um, as far as our strategy, 2050 defines clear ambition in the safety area, uh, we will continue improvement in this field by dedicating proper resources and competences and gaining additional knowledge uh, from the best industry practice and professionals. Uh, and finally, uh, in the governance part of ESG, main highlight, highlight for the period uh, which we are presenting today uh, and main achievement uh, is actually uh, that we received a rate from state governance center for the period 2022-2023. Uh, by methodology of this uh, center, uh, it's in general uh, result achieved within Q3, Q4 uh, of 2022 and Q1 and Q2 data is taken into consideration of 2023. So we have managed to improve. Uh, we previous year it was uh, A minus, so now we are back to A. And we have managed to improve significantly even to the highest rate uh, in a transparency dimension. So on this good note, uh, I would like to uh, pass a word for Vaidotas and to go through the numbers in a more detailed way. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Tyrus, uh, for passing me uh, the floor. So uh, I'm happy to report on a, a positive trends in our financial performance. Uh, during the first uh, nine months of uh, 2023, and the group uh, have continued to maintain the improvement in overall financial performance. Uh, Liquid energy terminal and commercial LNG activities even being the key drivers for success. So it's very pleasant to, to see that the efforts which we are putting into uh, efficiency of operations and at the same time efforts which we are putting to expand our, uh, our footprint and reach globally, uh, they are starting to pay off, uh, bring, uh, bringing us the better results. Uh, revenues for the first uh, nine months uh, uh, was up by uh, more than 7%. Uh, Euro compare, a million Euro uh, compared to the same period in 2022. Uh, the main uh, elements of this were, we are uh, 3.8 million Euro in LNG terminal as a reg regulated re revenue. Uh, Key factor for champion revenue uh, was a significant increase in demand for regasification services in the terminal uh, to, uh, started uh, in 2022 due, due to the war uh, in Ukraine. Also, uh, change in a regulatory regime uh, with the increase in uh, the pricing to one point uh, pricing level to 1.41. Uh, 
euro per uh, megawatt hour. Um, also, during the third half of uh, 2023, the company received uh, almost 1 million euro income related to penalties for unused capacity. Uh, however, as the profit of, from regulated activities uh, remains limited to regulated rate of return and temporary uh, excess profits according to the regulation, current regulation uh, shall be paid uh, back uh, to the consumers in the future periods. Uh, plus 1.9 million euro in liquid energy terminal segment uh, revenue, uh, mainly revenue increase mainly uh, influenced by in, uh, increase in liquid energy uh, uh, pro uh, product tank rent and uh, handling gasoline, uh, diesel, uh, especially diesel re related to, uh, dedicated to Ukraine and also liquid and biofuels. Uh, another driver was 1.4 million euro increase improvement in commercial LNG activities uh, segment revenue. Uh, as in addition to uh, KNSU, uh, LNG terminal operation income, uh, LNG related projects in Germany, where we are oper uh, commercially operating two of the three uh, terminals and uh, um, consulting uh, uh, revenues in, in Italy were received. At the same time, we have a slight increase in EBTA. Uh, by uh, 0 0.8 million euro, the main uh, drivers being 2.4 million uh, improvement coming from liquid energy ter terminals and demonstrating a more than 40% uh, uh, increase, uh, achieved mostly by diversified growth uh, in revenue and implementation of uh, cost efficiency measures. At the same time, uh, stabilization of energy prices uh, in the region and uh, globally also uh, made a positive impact. Uh, commercial uh, LNG segments profitability has improved by uh, uh, 0 0.8 million euro, mainly with income from projects in Germany and Italy, as mentioned before. Uh, Unfortunately, um, uh, the negative impact of 2.5 uh, million euro uh, for regulated segment mostly due to higher expenses. Uh, the regulated segment costs uh, increased by 6.1 million euro, uh, of which 2.45 million euro uh, is an increase uh, uh, in the cost of emission allowances since uh, the, our activity level is higher we need uh, more allowances uh, for, for uh, to purchase more allowances. Uh, also, uh, 1. million euro accrued uh, customers' compensation. Uh, they are recognized in 2023. And uh, FSU expenses higher by uh, 0. 0.6 million euro due to inflation and higher uh, OPEX maintenance costs. If we jump to net profit and loss, uh, the appreciation of uh, euro, euro against USD has a major effect uh, on the uh, non-adjusted net profit during the nine months of 2023, according to IFRS. Um, a total uh, analyzed exchange uh, uh, loss of uh, 700,000 euro less the fair tax uh, was recognized this year comparing to the loss of 35 million, 0.53 million uh, euro during the, the same period in 2022. Um, after eliminating unrealized currency exchange uh, income of a regulated segment, uh, it's adjusted net profit uh, amounts to uh, 1.1 million euro, 1.2 million euro. Uh, and the net profit of oil segment uh, increased by 2.5 million euro compared to the same period in 2022 due to already mentioned uh, reasons. Uh, Orienta, if you could jump to another slide. Uh, so uh, uh, increase in uh, 
other cash flows mainly due to due to currency impact from lease liabilities uh, generated uh, the positive effect of uh, 5 million euro um, uh, the re recent half uh, uh, nine months of a year uh, was uh, very less intense with investment in projects first capex uh, lower by 1.3 million euro if we can jump to another slide uh, to discuss leverage metrics so um, our uh, cash uh, cash uh, of 44.5 million euro was deposited uh, to short-term uh, deposits generated quite some re return uh, at the same time no significant changes in the capital structure except for additional partial loan drawdown uh, drew down to finance reduction of uh, the security supplement uh, in the regulator segment. Uh, also, during uh, nine, month, uh, nine months of 2023, uh, 53.4 million uh, euro lease liabilities were settled, uh, settled uh, during, uh, during this period. And uh, <clears throat> if we jump to the final present uh, slide of uh, financial presentation. So our gross profit margin have mo mostly maintained similar uh, level compared to 2022. Net profit and EBTA margins are uh, slightly lower compared to previous period, mainly due to previously mentioned decrease in uh, regulated LNG activities result. Uh, if we exclude the uh, regular LNG activity results, group profitability ratios are on the uh, re recovery path. And uh, return on equity, return on assets, uh, uh, and uh, uh, price uh, P and E ratio for the ninth months of uh, uh, 2023, uh, we, are significant, uh, we are affected by significant impairment losses recognized in uh, Q3 of uh, 2021. So that's all uh, from, from my part about our financial performance. Uh, looking into the future, uh, we foresee uh, that uh, positive trend continuing into the year end. And uh, we will be, uh, we, we will gladly answer your questions together with others. Thank you, Vyodatlist. Uh, thank you, Darius, uh, for the comprehensive uh, presentation. And now we will proceed with the questions. Uh, before that, I would like to remind you that you can submit them in the question box uh, at the bottom of your screen. And uh, so the first couple of questions were uh, submitted in advance. And let's start with the first one. Uh, how capable is the company of achieving its objectives in the one to five year range, taking into account geopolitical threats. So I I, I will take this question on me. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's quite philosophical question because uh, the level of the threats or challenges in a geopolitical arena, uh, which is which is neighboring our let's say country. Uh, is unpredictable, but uh, the answer is uh, very short from our end. Uh, we are capable. Of course, a new strategy requires revision of the capacities, resources, and competences which we have. But uh, I strongly believe that uh, this company is ready to resist uh, any challenge since last uh, three to three years. We survived COVID, we survived the Belarusian crisis, we survived losing Russian, uh, let's say, flows. Uh, we adopted organization uh, to, let's say, we made organization leaner, we made organization much efficient. The good example was uh, when I was talking about the CO2 emissions. So, yeah, this year it's only 9%, but in general, Within last three years, it was actually by two times reduced uh, energy consumption. So, so we are ready to compete. I believe uh, from the terminaling uh, companies, at least in this region, we are best positioned to, to let's say, handle with uh, threats 
Of course, uh, uh, it's not my duty to comment uh, risks like a conventional war risks, which are, you know, depending on analytics, uh, we are probably still on the table, but uh, I believe uh, uh, this will not be the case and uh, we will be able to continue our acti activity smoothly. But uh, maybe this question also involves uh, some comment which is needed about uh, safety of our infrastructure. So it's worth to mention that uh, during uh, this year, uh, we significantly improved the status uh, or physical safety uh, maturity and status of all our terminals located in Lithuania, including anti-drone solutions and including underwater protection of our, let's say, marine infrastructure. So, so once again, we are ready. Thank you, Darius, for the answer. And in terms of the uh, strategical objectives, uh, a question uh, is, are there any plans to expand beyond existing activities? If yes, to which regions? Uh, question which is, uh, let's say, the, easy, the easiest answer is to get aware of our uh, new strategy, still new, I'm saying it's still new because it's less than a year. Uh, yes, uh, our ambition is to enter new energies, uh, let's say business line lines, uh, which means hydrogen liquid carriers and hydrogen carriers. It is, uh, it is uh, also participation in, uh, in energy storage activities uh, and ambition uh, to have a CTS uh, infrastructure or carbon uh, handling infrastructure in one of our terminals. So, so it's many new topics, uh, also including our uh, ambition uh, to, let's say, expand our liquid terminals uh, presence. And uh, from our from our presentation, you probably seen uh, Mariampole, our latest development. Uh, which is close to the Polish border is doing fine. And uh, we have a strategy as well to, to, to let's say, expand activities, uh, not limiting ourselves to Klaipeda, Subacius, and any other, any other locations. Um, talking about the regions, uh, yes, our ambition in a global LNG terminals development uh, is, uh, is quite a wide one. Um, I think the most preferred regions is still Europe, uh, Latin Americas, and uh, and uh, Southeast Asia, where we are uh, really looking for opportunities. In in Latin America, we are present. In in Europe, we are also present. We are commercial operator of two out of three uh, presently active LNG terminals uh, in Germany. We supported SNAM terminals in Italy, etc., uh, and of course, uh, still continuing to look for for any other opportunities in the markets which are acceptable in terms of the risk for us. Thank you for your answer, and uh, let's proceed with the last question, at least for the moment. Are there any changes in the dividend uh, policy foreseen, such as interim dividends two times a year? Um, maybe uh, yeah, I, us, please, yes, I can jump to this question. So, uh, in general, we do not foresee, uh, at least uh, so far, uh, interim uh, dividend option uh, since you know, the size of our company. Uh, the amounts would not be meaningful. So, and, but uh, we are constantly looking into uh, ways how to expand our value proposition for the shareholders. Thank you for the answer, Vaidatas. And with that said, uh, it looks that uh, we've covered all of the questions. Uh, if if uh, anyone has, to, uh, has one uh, still, please submit it. But as all of the questions are answered, on behalf of Kleipadas Nafta and Nasdaq Vilnius, uh, thank you everyone for being today with us. Uh, the recording of the presentation will be available on Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel. Darius and Vaidatas, uh, thank you for the presentation and also answering the questions. Everyone have a great day and goodbye.
Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.